This video is a brief introduction to client scripts with a couple of examples. Client scripts are similar to UI policies in some ways. They both run client side. Client scripts require scripting. UI policies can use scripting. However, they also have a no code approach. UI policies by way of reminder can control whether a field is visible, mandatory, or read only or not. For instance, this request type field is set up so that if I choose networking, another field displays. That's done with a UI policy, but could also be done with a client script. Client scripts can do things also though on submit. So if I wanted to say validate whether the input for this zip field is valid when I'm updating the record, I can do that with a client script. Let's take a look at that. Right click on the form header, configure, Client Scripts, click New, give it a name, and now uh, the table is already selected because of the way we called up the script. UI Type is Desktop by default, which is where we are in the browser. You can also use Mobile Service Portal, but check documentation to make sure that what you're going to do will work with that. All would cover both scenarios. scenarios. Type, taking a look at type, we see that this can function on cell edit, which we'll take a look at in a minute. On change, is a function with the old value, new value available. On load, or on submit, which is what we want to do. So, let's take some code that uses a regular expression for the, to check the zip matches that, that the uh, data enters that uh, entered matches that expression or is blank. If not, it will throw a field message that says it's incorrect and will return false so that it will not uh, allow the update. For good measure, we'll put a description here so that if someone comes along, they will they'll see what this client script does. In the context menu, click Save. Let's go back to our record, example record, and try to update the zip field to four characters. We should get that field error message, and we do. If we set it to the proper five characters and then save, it allows us to save. Now, let's take a look at this same request in the list view. Here's what we've updated. And let's try updating that column. See if it'll disallow us from setting it to just four characters. Oh, but it does let us do that. Why is that? That's because the client script again, again runs client side. And on that case, it was only run, running on the form view. This is where the on cell edit comes into play and it's in the list view. So let's go back and to our record, right click on the form header, configure client scripts, and let's make another client script to take care of this scenario. Click new. Give it an appropriate name. And under type, now we're going to choose on cell edit. Notice that for on cell edit, we also need to choose a field that is in this case a column that we want it to act on. We want this to control or to operate on our selection in the, in the zip column. Similarly, by the way, if you're using on change, you also need to pick a field name for on change for the on change to function on. So back on L cell on cell edit, notice that we have the old values available, new value. This callback that references save and close, which is, starts off at true. And we're going to use that in our function so that we, we check the, re, the re, uh, regular expression here, make sure that the input either matches that or is blank. 
save, if so, save and close will be true. If not, we're going to throw a JavaScript alert and we're going to set save, save and close to false so that the record will not be, it will not allow us to complete that, that transaction. And just for good measure, we'll put in a description here of what this does. Context menu, click Save. And now let's go back to the list view and see what this does. Double clicking here allows us to save it to the five characters like it should. Let's go back and try to change it back to four characters again. We get the JavaScript alert, and it did not allow us to make that change. That is what we wanted to do. Despite that being effective, we should take note that this is still client side. Client scripts only run client side, so it will not protect, something like this will not protect from an update that could be coming in on the server side. This has been a finite video. Thank you for watching this. Have a good day.